boy, I love Coca-Cola on a hot summer's day. You know what I love more than Coca-Cola? Mentos. Mentos. You know what we should do? What? Combine them. Oh, dude, that's brilliant. Let's do this. Okay, so sit while we sit on the ground. Yeah, okay. Oh, wow. Wow. Oh, my gosh. Why is this happening? So what happened? I have no idea. Maybe it was that ma magic Coca-Cola Pepsi you were talking to me about that comes down with Mentos galore and bubbles. Sweet bubbles. Don't worry, my partner Adam Savage and I can explain it all. Jamie Heineman? Santa? The Ghostbusters? Ghostbusters? No, the Lawbusters. One part Mythbusters, one part Ghostbusters. Like a creamy marshmallow and pineapple smoothie? Uh, not quite like that. <laughs> How are we gonna do this? Take a look. Okay, so before we get into the more advanced parts of the information, it is time to understand the basics. We are seeing the CO2 escape from the soda when the Mentos is added. It does not change into a new substance. The CO2 remains, well, CO2. It is merely escaping from the liquid. This means that the change is going on is purely a physical change, not a chemical change, because the CO2's molecular structure is not being changed. So in theory, this change can be reversed, but I'm sure our older viewers already knew that. Now that explains what type of reaction this is, but the better question is, why the reaction is happening in such a reactive way? Well, the answer to this question deals with three more subjects of chemistry that we need to explore. The formation of bubbles, nucleation sites, and surfacants. <gasps> bubbles? I know what bubbles are. They're the clear circular thingies that float up in a liquid. Yes, that is true, Joe. But in truth, there is some high-level chemistry behind how bubbles are actually formed. In most liquids, there is some dissolved gas. In high surface tension liquids, like water, it is tough for bubbles to form. Because water mo molecules like to be next to other water molecules, this is known as capillary forces. To overcome this, a nucleation site is generally needed. Gas molecules congregate next to nucleation sites, which break up the network of water molecules. When enough are gathered, they form a bubble. Due to capillary forces, a bubble will initially stay at its nucleation site. But usually, the buoyancy of the bubble will eventually cause it to rise as more and more of gas molecules collect in the bubble. Now that sounds really interesting, but I don't really understand what you meant by nucleation sites. Could you please explain? Sure. A nucleation site can be thought of an actual physical location where energy is drawn off more easily due to the greater surface area to volume ratio of the site. In the case of vaporization, the nucleation site has a locally higher temperature and also has a site with more efficient energy transfer, causing the rapid explosion of soda. Oh, okay, it all makes sense now. But how does that tie into Coke's and Mento? When a soda is bottled, it is bundled, bottled under a relatively high pressure of CO2 that exceeds the solubility of CO2 in the rest of the formula. Yes, that is correct. When the can is opened without shaking, high pressure CO2 escapes above the liquid, making the familiar hiss. The CO2 in the liquid slowly escapes until equilibrium is achieved. On the other hand, when the unopened can is shaken, some of the gaseous CO2 gets mixed into the liquid, forming a supersaturated solution. The mixed gases also provide nucleation or growth sites for the dissolved CO2. The growth sites allow the CO2 to escape much more rapidly. Hence the explosive evolution of the CO2 gas. Okay, so just about any soda will make bubbles or fizz when open. But what is so special about adding the Mentos? This is a good question, and the answer involves a bit of both biology and chemistry. A surfacant, for example soap, is a long chain molecule which contains both a hydrophobic and hydrophilic head and tail. These opposite sides attract and repel water, creating a strong and versatile boundary. When these surfacants are added to the liquid, they reduce the work necessary to create and sustain bubbles. So when the microscopically rough edged 
high surface area Mentos is added to the liquid, which was already trying to make bubbles, you result in bubbles galore. It all makes sense now. Let's go, Math Busting! I've got the Mentos. Got the sodas. Let's do this thing. Trial one. Mexico and the Coca-Cola cap with the Coca-Cola cap screwed back on. <laughs> Anyone want a drink? So if it works with Mentos, does it work with fruit Mentos? Let's find out. Trial 2A. Coca-Cola constant with a fruit Mentos. Let's do this. Oh, that was busy. Right away! Alright, so this that is our fruit Mentos, and this is our mint Mentos. As you can clearly see, fruit Mentos reacted more. That is because the fruit Mentos had more nucleation sites, which caused more CO2 bubbles to form, spilling up higher and out more. Now that was pretty awesome. Let's do the same with different sodas, keeping the fruit Mentos as the control. Oh. Trial three. Fruit Mentos with different sodas. We've got Pepsi here, caffeine free diet Pepsi. And we got ginger ale and Mountain Dew. All right, we're gonna do a countdown and screw the caps off, come on. The, this will be without the caps on, just, yeah. Just cause. Yeah, just cause we can. Whose movie is this? That's right. Right. Five, four, three, two, one. Whoa! Okay then. Well, Diet Pepsi was pathetic. I didn't like, look. They're actually close to similar, that, but they probably are the same. The only difference might be the bottle size. This one curves in very slightly, and this one stays cylindrical throughout. This is our final test, just for funsies. We got a Pepsi here, and we're gonna use a full pack of mint Mentos totals. 14 Mentos. Ready? Oh, we didn't even get these. That was more than likely the biggest reaction because there's the least left. Anyone thirsty? So the reason why we had different results from the differing sodas is because of the different amounts of nucleation sites created in each of the sodas. And the difference is caused by the amount of carbonated soda in each of the sodas and the pressure that each one was bottled at. The myth that we proved today was the more nucleation sites in a soda equals more reactivity. See you next time! What we should do? What? Combine them. Oh, dude, that's a brilliant idea. Let's do this. <laughs> <laughs> now that explains what types of reaction this is. Oh, wait. I guess that's the types of reaction. Wait, what voice is that? I don't know. Crazy cat, man. Bubbles! I know what bubbles are. They're the clear, circular thingies that yeah. rise up in a liquid. You sort of cut off. Yeah. We're not using her again. Unless we screw it up again. Uh. Oh, we need a paper. <laughs> oh, I chucked my cat. Cat. <laughs> we go.
Just leave my... <laughs> yeah? What? Got it. So the reason why the different sodas reacted differently is because the amount of nucleation sites created... <laughs> wait, 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 wait. What? Taller? Yeah, yeah that, that seemed a bit taller. taller. Anyone else think that was taller? Yeah, I thought Is it was that still filming? That, yeah, it's still filming. I wonder... Collective group decision, it was taller. <laughs> and still delicious. Wow. Product placement. Yeah, I also... Ha <laughs> <laughs>